Welcome back to the Sound for More channel, it's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to Bliss Arpeggetto, a fantastic new app just released by Bliss. Before I continue, I would like to remind uh, my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Additionally, if you would like to participate to the giveaway, please do follow the instruction contained inside the video description. So let's kick off saying we are inside AUM. We are clicking on the plus sign here. We select audio to create an audio channel. We click on the plus sign at the top for audio sources. We scroll down and we reveal the search bar. And then we are going to start to type arpeggetto and we search for the arpeggetto and load it as a unit um, audio unit instance and therefore an audio source. As you can see, nice new icon. And um, representing here with the blue and white um, steps, really, because it has a pattern mode inside. And also you see a play mode here as well, which is great. Now let's open it up and double click on the title here to maximize the window, as you normally do inside the AUM. As you can see, really busy, typical interface of Bliss application, therefore it is e easy to navigate them because um, they use common uh, controls, so you don't have to relearn. And again, you also see some of a million controls, uh, controls from other application from Bliss. By default, it is inside this arpeggetto uh, tab of you, but you can go to the performance as you can see, to the LFO, to the motion, and to the synth. Indeed, it's not only an arpeggiato, it has a synth um, section. As you can see, you have a basic oscillator, a main oscillator, and then you have, uh, which is the carrier, and then you have a two modulator, FM1 and FM2. But let's kick off, first of all, on what you can do with arpeggiato. So you can see here, you have a name of a preset. Let's leave that as it is. Now, of course, if I was to click on play, nothing happens because uh, it's an arpeggiato, so it needs an input. <laughs> And of course, it will start to um, produce sounds uh, based on the synth engine here and also based on the configuration here of the arpeggiato. So the best way to do, of course, it would be to have some input going through a Bliss arpeggiato to create a performance. Of course, I can play live um, using the uh, keyboard inside the Bliss Arpeggetto, or I could, for example, use the internal AUM keyboard, or I could, um, for example, add an external MIDI controller. But now let's close uh, for, the, for the moment that um, Bliss Arpeggetto, let's click on the plus sign and let's click on MIDI to create a MIDI channel. And let's search for uh, Chord Jam. Why not? There it is. Fantastic application. And now let's link the two so that we have the MIDI signal coming from Chord Jam to drive chords, MIDI chords inside Bliss Arpeggiator. So we click here on the hamburger menu. We select as a MIDI input here where it says into a Bliss Arpeggiator. And then we select Chord Jam. Okay, you will see this blue tick there. Let's open Chord Jump, double click. This is not a session on Chord Jump. I have created a previous tutorial on it, but um, for now, let's select a preset. And like, for example, this cinematic one, double click on it. And you can see I have a number of chords here at the <laughs> One thing that I noticed is you don't see, of course, as in many other Bliss application, the MIDI events on the internal keyboards, that would be really nice if we could see that. So you have to use another application to do that, as I will show you in a moment. But you can see how nice the sound is. It's not a normal arpeggiator. You have a trigger, pattern, sequency, polyphony, adjustment on velocity. You have a lot. But now let's continue with the performance. So let's click where it says here, Bliss Arpeggiator, and let's duplicate the channel. Like so, let's ensure that Core Jam is again connected to this second instance. And let's open it up and choose a different preset, like for example, this move one. And you can see straight away we have a pattern here, which is nice. Okay, you can see all the different steps. <laughs> Thank you. 
great. Let's du duplicate this last channel again. So you've seen the process now, and let's ensure the code jump is actually connected to this third instance or third channel, first instance of Bliss Arpeggiator. So let's click where it says here, smooth, and let's now let's scroll down. Let's try to find something which is similar to, um, for example, a, a bass. Why don't we try? So you can see how simple it is to create a really nice performance and little composition, in this case driven by chord jump. You can see the sequence down here of the chords. Of course, we can change this to something else. Why not? And why not? Let's have more fun. So let's duplicate this channel again. Let's ensure that uh, the uh, the new Bliss Arpeggiator instant number four is connected to Chord Jump. And let's open this up and let's choose. So as you can see, lots of fun, um, but it's really a nice arpeggiator, really with lots of different options, as you can see. And um, you saw also a little bit of picking here. Uh, it was going into red. Of course, uh, I was adjusting a bit the main volume here on the synth section. Of course, there are other ways to do that. You could control velocity, for example, under the arpeggiator here. You can control the velocity, or you can adjust, of course, the volume of the different channels. So, great, great up, and um, it doesn't stop there. It can also be used to send the MIDI event, so it doesn't only drive the internal synth. So, let's see if we can use that. So, let's click on the hamburger menu here, click clear, and then click again on clear to confirm that. So, let's create again another audio channel, and then let's again um, try a uh, search for uh, the arpeggiator like so, and let's load it. Next, what we are going to do, we're going to create another OD channel, but this time we're going to select, for example, this grand piano, like so, and we're going to connect the grand piano to the Bliss Arpeggiator, so we click here and connect the MIDI source, sources, um, Bliss Arpeggiator, like so. So now we have uh, the Arpeggiator driving the piano. So we open the Arpeggiator, double click, So, and let's connect to the uh, keyboard as well from AUM. You can see activity here on Bliss Arpeggiator, and you can also see here activities inside the grand piano. So you can see that I'm sending MIDI an event to Bliss Arpeggiator, which has MIDI out, uh, events going out inside uh, the grand piano.
So as you can see, you can drive a MIDI um, uh, events uh, MIDI uh, through MIDI out. And that's great because it allows you, of course, to uh, use other audio unit instances as uh, audio sources. And of course, you are inside the UM. You can start to add as many as you like, add effects, etc., etc. So now let's click where it says here, ex extension. Let's click on remove channel and tap again to confirm. Now let's remove or hide that AUM keyboard. Let's maximize again Bliss Arpeggiator. Let's go where it says here the name of the preset. Let's scroll up to the very top and select default and then click again up here to default to exit the window. So we have a default preset now. Let's see a little bit of the controls, at least an introduction to the arpeggiator. So to show you what it really does, I like a little bit of theory. So let's click on the plus sign. Let's click on media and let's click on the plus sign again. Let's reveal the search and let's select uh, a grand stuff as a MIDI processor. And let's ensure that um, the, as a MIDI input, it does have bliss arpeggiator. So why are we doing this? It's because you can see the note which are generated through grand stuff. Okay. And that is absolutely fantastic. I hope you agree. Now let's um, resize the window here like so. And um, so that we can see a little bit more of the interface. There you are. Okay, so let's start with the uh, performance side. Here you can control the modulation wheel. You can establish a destination, of course. For example, you can go to any of the parameters. Typical interface, of course, of uh, a place, and then you can decide the amount, and you have two destination. Of course, you can use the internal wheel, and you can see the movement up there, or, and, or you can use an external one if you have a MIDI controller. So nice and simple. Here you have the usual keyboard. You can go up and down octave. You can select the scale here, chromatic, diatonic. If you go to diatonic, you can select the key and also you can go on scale major or minor as you prefer. You have control for MP, again, standards. We have seen them in other applications. So you have MP off here, but you can turn it on. Then you can have setting for glide for slide up and down, and also for pressure. Of course, if you have an external MIDI controller with MP, you can drive it from there. Then you have scroll, which allows you to scroll the keyboard. And finally, you have hold, which allows you to hold the note. You can see also the notes appearing here on ground stuff, which is great because that is exactly what I needed. Now, here you have X1, X, Y, 1 and 2 pads, and you can configure each one in terms of X destination, Y destination and amount, and then you can drive different changes directly from the UI. Great. Now, the main section is the arpeggiator. It's quite complex, so one tutorial um, probably doesn't give you uh, doesn't give it justice, but just as an introductory. So let's press on C4, you see the note there. You can see it says C4 here. Now on the um, left here, you have reset controls. So when you, based on the trigger, okay, you end up for, in this case, the door, you can reset the arpeggiator, LFO 1 and 2, the motion sequencer or everything. And you can also decide to do it on a bit or an input MIDI note. And you can also agree, decide on the rate as well. So next we have a trigger mode, which establish uh, the sync, of course, which can be free sync to the beat or based on a uh, MIDI note input. Of course, I leave it on sync and then I can adjust the rate and I can multiply the rate by um, a multiplier here. So let me show you. As well, I can adjust the rate itself. And I can also decide to filter, I can say no triplet or only triplet. And I can also give it a groove filling as well in terms of triggering. Okay. Now I'll come back to the pattern in a moment. Here you have the sequence, you have different play mode, which is what you um, saw here in terms of play mode. Okay. Of course, here they go by number, but inside the user interface, you have names like so, normal, um, up, woke up, trans, etc. You have a number of those. 
Now, this is the normal section of an arpeggiator. So here you have, for example, octave range if I want to go up an octave. So two octaves up there. Of course, I can do it. Okay, I can also decide to offset and buy an octave. So I start at the top here, as I, I can go negative. I notice a little a little thing here, when it's zero, if you turn it left, it says minus zero. Hopefully that is a little bug which will be corrected. It stays on all the dials, so hopefully if Bliss is seeing this, they will correct it. Next, I have a note to repeat, so I can say repeat notes twice. Of course, that works better. You can see better when you have more than one note. Otherwise, if it repeats the same note, it doesn't make sense. You can decide how open the gate is. So, of course, that depends on the type of sound which you have selected here on the synth, right? Um, okay, and then you can decide to have a normal upset if you want to stamp. Uh, it's jump any of the steps and then the type of repetition one two three four or infinite it never stops you can also have it in reverse order and you can have it also forward and backwards let me show you the difference so I click hold here and i press some notes and pay attention how they move here on green stuff I like the forward and backward, so they go up, so from this, that, and this one, and then they come back, right? So really nice. Then you have a polyphony section here. You can enable chords, which is great. So let me show you one note, and then I go up to chords. So it's practically repeating the chord instead of arpeggiating through the different notes which belong to the chord. You can also add a bass note here as well, one octave below, so... When a chord is off, you can act on polyphony here, so decides how many notes will play together through the arpeggio. But so, so let me show you again. Three note A, C, and E, and see what it does when you have polyphony two. Great. And of course, you can decide how the polyphony is spread around the different chords. You can establish also the gap and also velocity spread. And also, when it looks up for note, when it gets to the end of the notes range, you can say normally start from the beginning or is mirrored as well. And um, finally, here you have a section on velocity, so you can fix the velocity you set here and you can set also some randomness values. So, great. So, let's try. So that gives you great variability. Then you have an LFO and uh, you can activate it, of course, standard LFO as it in Bliss app. You can decide the waveform, the sync, the rate, the different destination with the amount for each of the destination, the offset, a smoothness, and you have two of those. Great. Then finally, you have a motion here, um, sequencer with a different step. Of course, this works similar to the way that it worked in other applications. You can decide the shape here of each step, okay, and the type of step, like so, right? So well, this is quite nice because it is, uh, you can have it just a normal step, like so, or different type of uh, connection, like so, three, right? Like this one, which always, always go up, this one which was always go down from the top, and this one, which is variable, like so, but it's connected this side. 
okay and so on and so forth but you can also draw right so if i go back to the default you can also draw like that hold down the, the mouse on your finger and then create a wave uh, shape you can have it in mode sync beat or based on no changes you can set the resolution as nothing to grid you can set the length here the randomness of course of the steps and then destination one and two with the amount so why don't we for example try um um why not octave range to start we say amount 78 and let's try and see what it does So as you can see, when it's going up here, it's going to increase the octave range here based on the graph. And of course, your arpeggio will go further up the octave range. Finally, we have a synth section. So you have a synth state on and off, which of course you can set it to off if you don't want to use it. You can adjust the volume. You have the main oscillator with tuning, course tuning adjustment here and a decay for the envelope. This is the carrier. And then you have two modulator, FM1 and FM2. Similar controls, you have course and decay as you have here, but then you have the amount of course in terms of modulating back the carrier. And then you have a delay as effect, state on and off. You can have in ping pong mode you can have the stereo uh, the mode in terms of being free or synced of course it's synced at the moment but it could be free you can see it changes here in millisecond instead of subdivision the timing low pass and high pass filter and some feedback and your dry and wet effect of course you can uh, also uh, randomize um, parameters um, as well right so Okay, the only thing I have not uh, explained is there is also a pattern here. And um, you can set to have a, a different combination here. Do you have so many? Look, 62. Um, and this is the different combination of uh, steps that it will be used to play the arpeggiato. They can be on and off. You can establish if um, it will hold the note or if it will simply mute the note when a step is disabled. You can adjust an offset and also the probability here of the step. Okay, so, but I will create another tutorial which explain that a little bit more in depth. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, the, the introduction to Blazer Pigetto. It's really nice. So it's an instant buy, in my opinion, as many other apps from Blaze. Okay, see you next time. Bye.